What's going on guys? No guides here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the 4 2 3 one why it's the most meta and stable formation to give you wins. I can guarantee you one thing, this will start giving you more wins in foot champs. Now you've probably seen this video, and um, this is actually on my other channel, you can view this. Um, you've probably seen this video where I explain everything in detail, you know, how it works, how does the formation work, how it works in practice. But the question I always get asked a lot is how does it actually work, what players should I use? And obviously I don't want to make a video too long so I never go beyond that. So without further ado, let's get straight into how the formation works and why it's made this way. Um, so this is a 20k team that I use. Just as a reminder, these, unbeknownst to many people, these formations have been tested a lot. I don't just make a formation up and just release it. There's a lot of testing that goes on behind the scenes. I normally give a formation to a gold player and an elite player. A couple of my friends from different ranges, skill groups, they normally give me feedback on the formation. Once that's it, once they kind of give me the feedback, I then decide the final, I suppose you can say, parameters for the tactics. Now, these are the tactics. Now, starting with the defensive style, we'll start with the formation as a whole. The reason why the 4 2 3 1 is such a solid formation is when you're defending the left attack in mid and the right attack in mid, um, the reason they don't come back on offense is it creates a mid, uh, kind of a midfield four. And the reason why this is made is no matter if you're like a goal player or elite player, the most important thing is to have players coming back. Now, after the most recent patch, you could only have four players in midfield at one point, and that's where Morales comes in. So Morales is a cam. Now, for Morales, the cam instruction is on is on stay forward, but the way he's positioned in the game is that you can still switch to him using the right analog stick, and you could basically use him and control and run around with just run around with him to defend. So you so you kind of have your midfield four and your back four in shape. And you can run around Morales. That's why it's so stable. But the other factor is on why it's so stable defensively, just the way it's laid out. You see, the way Morales and way th the way Benyeda are positioned on the pitch is when you're up against your opponent. Let's say your, play your play opponent's playing. Let's go to the typical 4 2 3 1. There's normally this gap in between, I suppose you could say, the, the, the two CDMs, right? And that's the role you can argue the cam and the strike occupy. So between your opponent's CDMs and cams, that's where, that's where your strike and your cam is going to be. And that's where you get kind of this situation where if you've seen in the video, for example, I'm just going to, it might be easier to show you, for example, like here, as you can see in this position, I'm just going to go back a little bit more. As you can see, when I lose the ball, if you focus on just these two players for now, just focus on the cam and the striker. Um, you see the way they're positioned. You see how f the far back they come. You see how they basically disrupt your opponent's CDMs. Now, this stops your opponent from playing out from the back. So, although in hindsight, it looks like he's doing nothing, there's a reason why it's there. The other question I get asked a lot is that the, the cams, why are these guys on comeback on the fence? Well, you see, a lot of players, you see, with instructions, you can have, for example, a striker to get in behind. You can't really do that for a cam. So, the reason why these cams are on comeback on the fence is the whole idea is they will come back and defend. So, these cams will come back and defend, hence making the the midfield fall but once you get the ball back these cams will start running forward and you see this is where the formation is kind of made for all all types of players you see those players are going to make darting runs in behind and it's up to you as a user to find that player now normally traditionally some players they may struggle to push a player forward and the reason why also they don't come back on the fences it's kind of designed to make you be more patient the reason why this formation is, you can argue a bit on the over defensive side. So if you go back to destructions again, if you go, for example, to the, the strikers on comeback and defense, then the cams on stay forward. The cams on stay forward because he's going to be the cam type person. But the reason why the strikers will come back on defense is sometimes I want him to kind of fill in the void. So let's say Gelson Martins is kind of brought down. Let's say he got fouled or something like that. Then Benyeda can fill in. But the reason why is that when you're attacking, I want the play to be slower. Because what people do is a lot of people, they rush, especially on the lower ranks. A lot of people, when they get the ball from like the goalkeeper perspective, the, the, their sole aim is when they get the ball from here, they just want to do a through ball and get to route one, get to the opponent's goal as soon as possible. And that's what kind of makes people not play that good because they're not very patient. Especially for 20, you have to be patient. I mean, I'm a very fast player. But I think if you want to prosper in FIFA 20, the key thing is being slow. So that's why I have my cams on comeback on the fence. Obviously, if you're two CDMs, uh, cut passing lanes will get onto in a second, uh, stay back while attacking. And drop between defenders, as I said, is probably the most important thing. That way, when you do go forward, um, this player is going to, this, this, um, well, let's say your most defensive player will kind of drop into a back five. Now again, the reason why this is made is, is that let's say you do lose the ball. A lot of players, they normally rush out with their CDM. Now it's better to kind of, be forced to psychologically choose someone like Suzoka who's next to the ball rather than someone like Delaney and leaving a gap because a lot of people what they do is they choose someone like Delaney and they rush to the opposition when they have the ball 
Whereas the good thing is when you're attacking, if Delaney is kind of in between the center backs, you're not going to be able to change them, therefore giving you more time to recover. So I'm just going to show you um, a quick clip. So I'm just going to, I don't know the exact time frame. So for example, like here, obviously the most important thing it becomes the fourth striker formation. I'm pretty sure you know that. That's the fourth striker, as you've probably seen that. So that's the, the cam and the striker. The link-up play between these two is amazing. The reason why the fourth through one is also effective is you can do a simple one-two. So let's say you get the ball to Mbappe, you do a one-two with him. He makes a run, and then all you got to do is play a through ball to Mbappe, and it's solid. Same on the wings. It's actually a very, very effective formation in that way. So... Typically speaking, if you have a 4-4-2, sometimes you've got no one to pass to, but just the fact you have that cam player just a bit behind gives you more stability, if that makes sense, going forward. So that's why it's, in, in that respect, a very good formation. And let's talk about the five defenders as well. As you can see, Delaney, in, in this example over here, Delaney, um, he would be this person over here, and as you can see on the radar. So as you can see, in theory, it's basically a back five. So when you do lose the ball, you're going to be forced to switch someone like this guy and then use the laney as a worst-case scenario. So that's the reason why um, I use drop between defenders. It's, it's more for defensive stability. Um, this is the 3 one, five one. You kind of see that yourself in the video. And as, as I said, going back to the cam, remember I said the cam, um, even though he's on stay forward, you can still use the cam very, very effectively over here. And Ron Morales, this is a perfect example. So here we have... The cam, as you can see, I'm just running around with him. I'm defending with the cam. It is a bit of a newbie tactic. I won't lie. It's a bit of a newbie tactic to do. But it is very, very effective nonetheless. And I highly recommend doing it, especially if you're on a lower tier. And you still have that extra striker on stay forward for the counter attack. So that's what's very, very important. Also, looking back also with, with the formation as well. Another thing that I like about it the most, the most important thing is, is that the lamb and the ramp. As I said, you know when they come, when they go forward and I come back on the fence? is the darting ones they make forward, which makes it really hard for your opponent to, to basically unpredict. Now, going over to the tactics, um, this is a question I get asked a lot. So people always ask me, can I use different tactics? Well, the truth is you can use whatever you want. Um, don't forget, some players prefer drop back and over balanced. That's completely fine. In a video, I say you can use drop, drop back or balanced. I would say drop back is heavily enough. Now it's kind of no point using drop back. Especially after the most recent patch. That's why in most of my formations I advocate using balanced. Um, but I only use only say use drop back if, for example, you're on the dire need. Because some people are just so used to playing drop back. It's very important I just leave it in there. Um, so if you ever see me say, if you're watching this video, that means either you're A, number one, you're interested in my formations. Or B, you just want to know how the formations work. That's the reason why you say drop back. Because some people are just used to it. Um, but pressure on heavy touch is what the third option is. makes it a very attacking formation. Don't forget the 4 2 one naturally do have a lot of players, you can argue, everywhere. So I suppose you do have that element of, okay, you know what, I have players in certain positions, you know, I can recover quickly. So if you do pressure on heavy touch, you can still have some recovery. That's the whole point. Um, the most important thing is don't use constant pressure for obvious reasons. You can just use team press in-game. Pressing down the D-pad and pressing left when you're when you're defending or attacking, you can activate team press and that basically does constant pressure for you. So there's no point in setting that as the actual defensive tactic. Now press after possession loss, there is many issues with this. Um, the main issue being that sometimes your players, they always deliberately press. Sometimes there might not even be a clear chance to win the ball. But because the way the tactic is made and devised, it's meant to replicate the Pep Guardiola or the Klopp type mentality of defensively, trying to get the ball back as soon as possible. But it doesn't really work like that in hindsight. Um, especially because the game is so slow, it's easy to play around you, and stamina gets killed a lot. So the best thing to use is pressure on heavy touch. So that way, if you do want to press, if you, do, if you are losing, this way you only press when your opponent makes a mistake, a heavy mistake, and a good chance for you to win the ball. And thus, you can serve stamina. So anyway, I'll stick between balanced or drop back or pressure on heavy touch. Completely stay away from press or possession loss. And use constant pressure, I'll be honest. You shouldn't be using this formation if you're losing. I'll change to like a 4 for 2 second variation, which is better for pressing. But you can use constant pressure if you like to. Um, now going with the width now, I've gone with the width of five. Now this is quite a balanced width. The reason why the force you want is quite a narrow formation anyway. Um, don't forget when the ram and the lamb when they track back, if your opponent's playing a wide formation, these guys will end up going wide. Now the question I get asked is can you use overload the ball side? You actually can with this formation. The reason why I don't advocate it too much is it becomes a park the bus formation. What overload the ball side does is these players they kind of come inside and it kind of contracts your your kind of your entire team and your entire team is like kind of in the middle of the pitch. And what that does is that kind of narrows your opponent's chances of going down the middle and it's basically forcing them on the wide side. It's basically leaving more gaps on the wide areas, but you're concentrating your defense in the center. 
Now, the best way I can explain this is imagine like if you've seen football in real life, if, you, if you were lucky enough to see like Mourinho or Diego Simeone, you see how they play very narrow, very compact. That's what overload the ball side is doing. And obviously, the best way to exploit that is hug the sidelines when you're attacking against it. But it's very effective to use that tactic. So you can use it. The reason why, again, I don't mention it in the video too much because I don't want to be known as the kind of guy that's telling everyone to park the bus. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to keep keep an equal level of, you know, not making people be over defensive, but being defensive, but also attacking. So you can reduce the, the width on that. Um, but there's no point in increasing or decreasing. I think, I think five by itself is fine. Don't forget the cams. Even though they're cams, they still come back in wide positions to cover like the 4 4 2. Um, now moving on to, I think we're going to move on to, yeah, sorry, the depth, the depth is what we're going to move on to. So depth has gone with three now. I think three this year is the most appropriate balance. It kind of works alongside with the cams. Now because the cams, don't forget, they come back on the fence and the striker comes back a little bit. You d if, if your depth is too high, then your striker is going to be too far forward. The distribution from your goalkeeper to your striker is going to be hard. The reason why three is a good balance is your team are a bit more reserved, a bit more further back. Um, it's mainly for when you win the ball back. So these wide players, um, when they come back from a defensive position, the key thing is they're in a position where they can run forward. That's the most important thing is, you know, you, you want these cams to be running from like a deep position and then you want them to be running forward. And this can only be achieved if they're kind of further back. So if they, let's say they're defending, they're like over here in front of the centre back, the full back, so you don't get doubled up. When you do win the ball back, they will run forward. And this will naturally push your opponent's defence forward. A lot of people don't realise this, but the lower depth you have, your opponent's defence reacts differently. That's why I go with a depth of three. You can honestly... Um, improve this like four or five but I think three is the way to go I use three I'm a very attacking player um, but I think if you go any higher you're putting yourself at risk of counter attack if you do lose the ball I would never go lower though the, the problem is when you go low you're inviting pressure now maybe if you're in gold if you're a gold three player this may work for you but I'll be honest if you're any if you're looking to go above goal three this is going to kill you because a good player would just start doing fake shots and passing around your box outside the box over here now, if so, if your opponent pin is, pins you in your box, you're in big trouble, big, big trouble. So you don't want to put this depth any lower than three. That's the reason why it's on three. It's a good balance um, for your opponents, kind of pushing your opponents to team forward, but also giving your, I suppose you can say, your wing backs time to run back and same with your cams. Um, but yeah, three is the best thing to go. I wouldn't really go with six, I'll be honest. Even pro players that I know, a lot of them, they all go three or four. I personally play five and six just because I just want to have a bit more fun. I mean, I'm the kind of person where I don't mind losing a couple of games just to have more fun. But the reason why this formation is so stable with three is just the perfect balance. I'll just say leave this on three. Now, defensive style as well, I get asked a lot, why do I use long ball? Now, long ball, for those of you that don't know, is kind of like the player trigger button. Um, I can't really just explain this too much. Um, the best thing I can do is, um, if, if I show you this old video from when I uploaded last year, so this is going to be a really, really old video that you can watch. I uploaded a year ago. This is when I kind of started doing YouTube. Um, as you can see here, um, I'm trigger see, this is what's called triggering players to make runs. As you can see here, you see the player that's highlighted, you see how they run forward. See how, for example, Carl Walker runs forward. I'm triggering him to make a run going forward. I do that manually by pressing L1. And you see, when you play the 4-2-3-1, not this is a video from FIFA 19, but the same thing applies, right? If, for example, you're playing a 4 2 3 1, a lot of players you there's not really getting behind. For example, what I mean by that is the left mid, let's say, for example, a wide formation, let's quickly change formation to a 4 4 2, for example, right? You can have a left mid and right mid on getting behind, um, getting behind, but you can't do that on cams. There's no instruction for getting behind for God knows what reason. EA haven't in added it in, maybe because it's just too much information. Um, so you can't actually use get in behind. So that's why you're only limited to support and cross this position of your own. And that's why the L1 trigger, which is pushes players forward, is very, very effective. But a lot of players don't know how to use this. You'll be surprised. A lot of, I would say, maybe above 90% to 95% of your whole entire FIFA community don't know it. Only the small majority are in foot champs. And even then, only a few people know about it and even use it. And it's probably the most effective thing to do. 
Now, obviously, for my level, I like to think um, I'm a decent player, but I think I'm also well versed in the FIFA mechanics, I suppose you can say. So I know when to use an L1 trigger. Now, does the average player who's lacking gold three, gold one, do they, do they know how to do it? Probably not. I'm going to show you how you do it anyway. Unfortunately, excuse my editing on this video. It's like one of my old videos, so the production quality is not 10,000%. Um, but um, you probably see roughly over here. As you can see here, move the left analog stick up and then I press L1 or LB. And you see when the player sticks his hand out, that's what initiates. So as soon as you press up and then you press L1, so you basically face the player, press L1, that player makes a run. Now that's what you can do manually and that's why I would suggest if you can do that, then use balance. There's no need for you to use long ball because you rather just use balance. But because long ball is the reason why, again, going with the cams on come back on the fence, these guys, they're going to come back to defensive position and then long ball. And then the fact they're on come back on the fence is going to make them make their darting runs forward. That's the reason I have them on come back on the fence. Now, me personally, I play these on balance because I want them to be more attacking. But that's the reason why they're on come back on the fence. That's the whole reason, the whole purpose, because I want them to make their darting runs forward. So if you're at the skill level where you know how to trigger players making runs in behind manually, you can leave this on balanced if you want to. Um, but long ball is a very feasible option and that's why I always recommend it in my videos and I always say if you're below gold one just use long ball if you're above gold one and you obviously got the skill and expertise you know just use it on balance you want more control now uh, fast build up play you can use it on this formation it is completely viable uh, problem is it builds up too fast I think um, I think it's a, it's a kind of a tactic to use when you're losing I wouldn't say 520 is not really a fast game so it's kind of pointless using fast build up play so I wouldn't really steer towards that. Um, possession is what I use if I'm trying hard now. Going back to this video, I said trigger in place to make runs in behind. Um, so going back to this video, trigger in place to make runs in behind. Um, it's the same thing. Like here, for example, I'm pressing L1. I trigger that player to make a run in behind. But the most important thing is that run will not be made if, for example, you're on possession. So that's why I don't use possession because if you have possession and you have these cams on comeback and defense, they're just going to come short. So they won't be able to make runs in behind. So let's say you have the ball with your cam. If you're on possession, these players are just going to run towards your cam and have the short options because you want them to run forward. The way I do it and I'm trying hard is I press L1 or LB to push them forward manually. So that's why even though you don't see me playing try hard because I don't really play try hard on stream. But if I was to play try hard, I'd probably use possession. Um, because that way players come short and I can trigger players going forward manually but obviously needs, that needs a lot of concentration as you probably know when I stream I'm mainly looking at the chat or whatever so I don't really get that much time to actually pay attention and concentrate in a game but when I am tryharding I do use possession it gives me a bit more control um, but yeah I would probably say balance or long ball is what I'll probably go with possession if you really know what you're doing and you're actually trying hard isn't the most fun um, but it is if you're trying to replicate a specific style of football like I am now with attacking width, now don't forget these cams, although they seem to be narrow cams, they actually play like lambs and, and rams in game. Um, that's kind of what's important and I think you need to bear that in mind. I'm just going to show you, uh, going back to the video, um, some video examples. Uh, so for example here, you see a situation where, so one thing I want you to focus on is this clip over here. So this has been me when I'm defending. As you can see, they defend very narrow. But if my opponent is wide, like let's say my opponent's fullback comes and overlaps, he will basically track that run. Um, but the most important thing is when you're attacking, it's the, it's the kind of the, the wide cams. Now these wide cams can only be achieved, for example, when running forwards. So as you can see, even though they're quite narrow, you see how they play as wingers? See how wide they are? So even on a width of four, which I have, they're still quite narrow. So that's why I don't increase the width any more than I need to because they're already quite narrow. I mean, quite wide as it is. I want them to be a bit more narrow. So that's why I leave it on four. And uh, the most thing, important thing I would, sort of, I would say over here is if you leave this on one, there isn't that much of a difference. Unfortunately, formations are not really as fluid as I like them to be. Um, the, the width always changes on different formations. So for example, 4-4-2 is a very narrow formation. So let's say for example, the 4-4-2 it's a very narrow formation, so I may I might I might go with a width of one and two, whereas the four two three one um, because it's quite a, a middle variation formation. So I've only gone with one low. I don't want to go with too low. If you put it too low, you're going to reduce the passing options and contract your team to the middle, and you're not going to have any wide options. So I wouldn't really go towards that territory. So I think four is good. Now plays in the box, truthfully, doesn't really mean that much. If the instructions are the most important things, as a reminder, remember instructions over always override tactics. Um, so do bear that in mind. 
Uh, I'll explain that in a second and when we go on to it. Yeah, so six uh, six five four doesn't make a difference to players in the box. Um, but we'll get on to that in a second. I'll explain to you why it doesn't make a difference. Corners are free kicks, obviously, whatever is your own discretion. Whatever you feel like using, it is completely up to you. You have your choice. Um, obviously, too high, too low, you're going to be done on the counter attack. Um, I normally pass my corners, so I leave mine on low. Um, but of course, if you do cross them in, then obviously put them on high. Same with free kicks. I normally pass my free kicks, so I kind of prepare for the counter attack. But anyway, now going over the instructions now. Um, so when it comes to instructions for the this, for this strikers, you can do whatever you want. Um, the most important thing I'll say, stay sentry. You don't want these guys kind of drifting wide. You already got wide players. Um, it's, it's kind of pointless putting this person on drift drift wide, unless you're trying to create something something unique. Um, but I'll probably go with stay central or balanced. Balances I'll probably say the best or stay central. I use I like stay central because I like this guy to stay in the middle. Um, attacking runs you can use either. You can use getting behind if you're going to use balanced. If you're going to use long ball, you lead us on on default if you want to. Um, if you want to use the first time fake shot with these players, I would suggest. You know, you can maybe do target man, but I think balance is the best. I think for an all-rounder, I think if someone got good attack positioning, balance is the best. You want this person to get in behind, play through balls, put them and get in behind. If you've got someone like Ben Yedo or Messi on low stamina, you can put Conservative in a set, but it's just a tip um, for defending. Um, of course, if you've got someone on low stamina as well, you put them on stay forward. I put them on comeback, as I mentioned earlier, because it kind of covers for someone else. And it kind of creates this, um, because this player's on stay forward, it kind of creates this kind of situation where the striker come, tries to come behind the camp, but it doesn't really come behind. Um, they're just better for the link-up play. I want them to be a bit more closer together, these two players, on the counter-attack. Um, now, the wide cams come back on the fence. As I said, the sole reason is I want them to come back um, to help defend, um, but I also want them to kind of go forward adopting runs. You can leave this unbalanced, in all honesty, um, the most important thing is work rates here. Uh, I think when you've got a cam on balance, they're still going to come back on the fan. But if you've got someone like uh, Makalele here, for example, who's like high high defensive, low attacking, probably best to leave this person on um, stay forward or come back on the fence. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to leave anyone on balanced, like a cam or centre mid, work rates as important and the player's position does adhere to work rates. So that's why I say come back on the fence. So regardless of the player, they're always going to come back. So whether they're high, low, high, medium, medium, low, they're always going to come back. Now get into the box. As I said to you, um, the players in the box, is it important? Maybe, maybe so. Um, but as I said, you can have this on one um, if you really want to. But if you put, for example, all your cams to get into the box, they're always going to get into the box anyway. So it's going to override those tactics. Um, the main thing that this does is you can argue the positioning of like your, C your CDM, how where they're positioned is important. I would say two or three is fine. Um, remember, sometimes when you're remember, this is only for the biggest confusion I always get is people say, "Is this like all the time?" Like, let's say, for example, the ball is over here. Does that mean that players are going to get into the box? No. Remember, this is only for when you're in a crossing situation. So this only means when you're in a situation like here. If you're in these two zones marked in the in the, in the yellow zone, then this play in the box thing will come into effect. But if you have the ball outside the box, let's say you're trying to pin your opponent and you have the ball over here, it doesn't influence how many players are in the box. So it's only when you're in a crossing situation. So if you do make a run down the wing and you do kind of do a cutback, the players in the box is somewhat important. I can't let my players to be outside the box and kind of pass around and work the ball back into the middle of the pitch again, personal preference. Um, but again, it's completely up to you. I'd probably just leave this on three. Um, I, I kind of put all my players and get into the box just to increase my stability. And if I get the ball on the wing on that side, I kind of want my cam to run in, my lamp to run in from deep um, as well. And then my striker to be in the middle. That way trying to, you know, create more confusion late minute, last minute run, especially when you want to do a fake shot stop. This is actually really, really important. So you can wait for this player. You can do a fake shot stop here. Wait for this player to come into the position and then pass up this player, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why you can use get into the box. Um, stay on the edge of the box. You want to play defensive. Again, if you want to pass around the box, if you really want to, you can do that. You can leave it on balance. In all honesty, balance is actually pretty good. That's why I actually leave mine on balance quite a lot. It is pretty decent, I won't lie. Um, but uh, again, some people prefer to get to the box, they prefer to play outside the box, completely up to you. Now, the positioning, um, drift wide, they just basically act as wingers, pointless in my opinion. Um, free roam, it just, it's alright, I would say if you're going to use free roam, 
put the outside players on free room. Do not put the central cam on free room. This cam, he needs to stay in the middle. Your whole link up player will completely be destroyed. Just imagine, just imagine in, in hypothesize for a second for a second, Morales was like down here. You can have no middle player, you can have no link up player between your striker and the rest of your team. This player is arguably one of the most important players in your team. So this guy's over here and you got a hole in your cam and you have the ball with your CDM and your or your both your wing uh, your cams are are marked by the opponent's wing backs and your striker's kinda occupying your your opponent's centre backs, who are you gonna pass to? So do not put this person on free roam unless you put all three on free roam. But even then I wouldn't it doesn't work that well. If it's, if you're thinking like, you know, he's gonna do some Leonor Messi type stuff or like, you know, how um Iniesta played his complete free roam or how Bell is at Tottenham, it's gonna be nothing like that. It doesn't really work that well is what I would say. Just save it. It's kinda of just basically gives them permission to deviate from their position. So people kind of fill each other's position, etc. But I would just say the the outside on let's say you like to be more centralized, you can leave these guys on free roam, the outside guys, and you have a central guy on balanced. Um I think position leave it on default. Um I won't touch this. Again, interceptions, again you can put aggressive if you really want to. Stamina's gonna cost you of course. Um but I wouldn't touch aggressive interceptions for these guys. Um, again if you have someone with low stamina you can do conservative interceptions if you really want to. Um but obviously be careful when you do aggressive interceptions that could be pushed out of position. Uh, so do bear that in mind. Um, for the CDMs, we've gone with the st cut passing lanes. Obviously, drop between defenders. I explained that earlier. Cover center. Obviously, the reason why these both are on cover center is you want them to always be in the middle. Remember the cam. Even though they're unbalanced or come back on the fence, they're going to cover the wide areas. So it's kind of no point putting these guys on cover wing. It's almost redundant. Um, so just make sure you put these on cover center. Um, you can change the defensive behavior to balanced. I think man mark doesn't really work that well um, because players think about this when you do a through ball, right? Does it ascend? Does the does the CDM always? Let's let's say you have the ball with your center back, right? Let's just say for example, right? Let's say in this instance, right? If you did a through ball over here, let's say for example, like with a through ball to this guy or to like this guy over here. Do you think the CDM is really going to man mark that player? No, you might also have them have him in a position where he's kind of like um, if this guy's CDM was on cut passing lanes, his CDM might be about here, stopping the ball distribution from being cut. Whereas if he was on man mark, he'll be close and up and tight next to the player. So that's why I think cut passing lanes. I discovered it last year as being very effective. So I just use cut passing lanes. I mean, you can use man mark if you really want to, but I wouldn't suggest it. You can use balance. Balance actually a feasible option. A good balance. Uh, both of them on balance would be good. Um, but I think cut passing lanes acts as a visual deterrent because even when you're attacking, let's say for example, um, you want you have the ball with this guy. Um, if you're if you're if your CDMs are cut passing lanes, this guy will kind of fill in um, and kind of block that pass naturally. So it's kind of limiting your opponent's chances anyway. Is what kind of what happens off the ball remember it was very important um again um you can never put aggressive on these guys never because if they make a mistake you're basically through on goal um say so always say leave it on normal um you can put them on balance but again it's going to adhere to work rates i normally have one guy on drop back and maybe one guy on balanced or one guy on stay back one guy on balanced have um, to be a bit more of a defensive you can put one stay back one on drop between defenders um Get forward doesn't mean they're going to remember this doesn't mean they're going to stay forward. This means this means that they're going to be basically balanced when they're defending. Um, um, but when you get the ball, they're going to run forward. That's what get forward means. So when you're defending, they're still going to defend in a situation, but you may be you may lose the ball and this player will be out of position. So do bear that in mind. Um, get forward is good if someone has bad work rate. Let's say you play someone like Ibra here, for example. Um, get forward is actually very efficient to play there. Stay back while attacking is probably what I would use. I wouldn't really go towards balance unless you've got someone that's medium high like Kante. Um, I think the best combos here is medium high and high high. Um, but we'll get on to work rates in a second. CDMs again, I mean, let's send it back to these one. Um, balanced. Same with goalkeeper. There is no point using these. Um, it's pointless, I'll be honest. You can just shoot yourself in the foot by putting super keeper. Um, full backs, of course, stay back while attacking. You can always push them forward um, using the D-pad tactics. Um, attacking fullbacks, um, so there's no point using join the attack when you can just trigger that with the D-pad. It's pointless doing join the attack. You can put them on balance, but you know you need fullbacks that are high, high. They're going to be caught in a position a lot. Um, run type inverted overlap. Obviously, um, overlap. What happens is these guys kind of make the right, the the wide runs. 
um, and contrast inverted means that they're going to run on the inside and what this does is it actually pushes out these players even wider so unless you've got like team of the year Trent do you really want to push your right attacking mid out of position probably not so I really would have recommend it. if you're thinking like Pep Guardiola-esque it doesn't really work like that in principle although you probably I mean when I first saw this I'll be honest I got a bit excited thinking oh my god maybe I can play like how Pep does uh, with his fullbacks being inverted or how Wenger played um, briefly in 2009 um, but no it doesn't really work like that uh, so that's one thing to bear in mind I probably say leave these always on overlap um, I would always say yeah overlap as well I'll leave them on um, work rate is now fine to finish on high high or high medium is best here um, if you're going to put them on a bad work rates put them on stay forward um, otherwise leave them on balance it's not that bad um, if you want them to stay forward obviously put them on stay forward it doesn't really matter too much about the striker the cam um, stay forward I normally put this guy on stay forward so again work rates is not that important in this perspective um, you can put anyone here um, the wide cams, if you're going to put them on balanced, I would say try to get high, high or high, medium. Um, if you can't, unless um, there's a bad work rate, just put them on comeback and defense as well. I'll just kind of say, so if you haven't got a good work rate, put them on comeback and defense. CDMs, I think I'll go with one with a medium high like Kante and a high, high, someone like Suzuka or someone else like Firmino. A high, high and a medium high works very well in this instance or like a high, medium and a medium high. Uh, a good combination. You can always put... A good thing to do is a medium defensive, high attacking. Um, if you put this player on balance, for like Hullet, they're extremely well because they make, they make those last minute runs on their own. Um, so that is very effective. But again, if you're going to put a player on balance, they have to have the work rates. Otherwise, put them on. I'll still always put one guy always on stay back while attacking. Again, um, left back, right back, high, high is what you want or high, medium. Um, if not, just put them on stay back while attacking and trigger them manually. Now the center backs, um, I use full backs and center back contrast to belief, full backs, um, work rates and full backs mean absolutely nothing in center back. I have tested this myself numerous times, they still stay in line. The only thing you can argue is that A, when you're doing an offside trap, there's some slight discrepancies, but even then, it's so unnoticeable, it's pointless even thinking about it. Um, people always say your full backs are quite harder, you know, when they're high up, but it's not true, you know, they're in the same position as a normal centre back. There's no difference. Obviously, full backs are better, but a video will be on that next week. But that's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much it. As I said, if you want to make this more attacking, what you can do is you can use similar to last year as well. Um, another good way of playing this is using pressure on heavy touch, um, high defensive width to win the ball, spread your team out, win the ball back, increase your depth. Um, uh, balance is pretty good. Medium width increase the players in the box. If you want to make this quite attacking, put this guy on stay forward, this person on stay forward as well. That way you kind of got the set the forward striker type partnership, always on forward. Leave these guys on balance is what I would say. Um, and leave one centre mid on balance and one on stay back while attacking. That way you kind of get that attacking force. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I know this is, I'll be honest, I made this on my second channel because I know some of you guys are interested on in this video. I know some of you are because um, you love the 4 2 3 just as much as I do. I'll be honest, this formation, I really enjoy it. If I'm tryharding and I really want wins, I would use this formation. But for me, it's just boring. I don't want to play FIFA to play defensive. It's not my style. I'd rather lose and play attack and have fun than be defensive and win the game. Believe me, winning is not that important for me um, just because I know... You can argue because my record is decent. People think I like to win, but it's not the case. Um, having fun is the, f the most the foremost and the most important priority for me. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any other questions, of course, do let me know. I'll make a follow-up video with this. Um, but again, also, sorry, players, sorry, um, try to get a fast play here so I can get in behind. Cam, someone like Neymar, someone that can pass, shoot, and dribble is very effective. De Bruyne is all right here with a hunter. Make sure he's got good pace though. So you kind of want someone who's got at least above 85 pace. If you're going to use someone like De Bruyne, put a hunter on him is very important. Someone like Nedved, Neymar, um, very good in that role. The wingers, they're not really important. You can kind of get away with someone cheap, um, Dembele or the likes. Um, but like someone like Mbappe is probably on the better side. Someone that can dribble, get past down the wing. Don't forget these guys are kind of like wingers. Kind of run back and forth, high stamina. CDMs, you know, one defensive, Kante, one attacking. Uh, someone like Sizoko is fine. And then the fullbacks, it doesn't matter who you get, as long as they've got above 90 pace. It's the most important thing for fullbacks. Because remember, whenever you're choosing a player on a pitch, just hypothesize in your head, if I'm choosing Odrizola as a right back, 
who are the most meta players that are left wingers because don't forget a left wing is going to be against your your right back right so like people like Neymar Neymar have already got like 90 sprint speed so you're already in trouble if you're using someone below 90 sprint speed um, especially if they've got the head start on you because uh, you want to recover anyway guys thank you much for watching take it easy and I'll catch you in the next one peace out boys